Well, hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hey, What's Next? This is the show where we explore audio, video, computers, and sometimes solar. A few weeks back, I came across a YouTube video about an optional graphics card for an Elite Desk 705 G4 mini PC computer. Wait, what? I had no clue that the Elite Desk that I own had this as an option, so bonus, I purchased it for $60 on eBay. Does the card improve the graphics of this mini PC compared to the built-in graphics? Hmm. Let's find out. The HP Elite Desk 705 G4 Mini and add-on Radeon 560 graphics card. These are what's next. Oh no, we've brought out the blue iFixit map. That means we are doing an upgrade today. On this, the HP Elite Desk 705G. Now, this is a PC in my collection that I use on a regular basis. I primarily build interactive training, online help, some website stuff, uh, and every now and then some video related items. But I primarily keep this just so that I can keep my Windows experience somewhat current, even though this system is stuck at Windows 10. You cannot upgrade it to Windows 11. We'll talk about the specs here in a moment. It's small. It's a mini PC with lots of ports, uh, primarily aimed, I believe, at the business market. Uh, you can find a ton of these on Amazon at varying prices. I bought this about two years ago. When I bought it, though, I didn't know that there was much upgrading outside of the SSD um, and the RAM. And that's obviously where the focus of the video is going to be. Is a video card worth it uh, to add in here, a dedicated video card? So anyways, uh, let's look at the outside of this box here. We have a USB-C. This is just USB-C. You have two USB-3 ports. We have headphone jack, headphone jack with microphone and your power button on the back. This is very interesting. Again, considering this PC was 2018, we have three display uh, ports. We have a display port, display port HDMI is what I should have said. Uh, we have four more USB connections and I believe gigabit. And then that is the barrel jack for the power. You'll notice that it actually has some decent venting back here. Copper pipes, we'll look at the inside here in a moment. Um, and then you have your open vents at the top. So today's video is primarily going to be upgrading the graphics card in here. So what does this unit have? It's an AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 2400G with built-in Vega 11 Radeon graphics. And it also has the standard 2.5 inch drive bay as well. It works well for me. It may not be for everyone. But again, you can find this on Amazon. Discounted, tons of refurbs out there. Let's go ahead and let's open this up so we can get a look at the internals. We have the one screw in the back and then we should be able to just pop this off just like that. And there's our internals. As you can see, we have our two and a half inch drive bay here. It's kind of cool because this actually will just flip up and you can replace the drive pretty easily and then when you're ready you can go ahead and push this back into place that's a fairly easy upgrade again the ram is located under here the other m.2 ssd sits under here and what we're going to have to do is in order for us to get the graphics card into the device this bay has to go away the other thing that has to go away is our HDMI port. We're gonna go ahead and start disassembling. And yes, finally, I'm going to get to use the Fantech screwdriver from an earlier video. I'll leave a link up here. But before we go ahead and tear apart this computer, what are we actually adding into this device? That is this, the AMD Radeon RX 560 with built-in four gigabytes of memory. 
This will either work with the 705 or 805 G4. Not much to it. Obviously, it's a proprietary card. We have our display port here, which we have an adapter for that to get to the HDMI. That is the slot that is going to connect this board up with this board. We are going to set the torque to high. We also need to disassemble the power here. And we have another connection here towards the back. If you can see that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pop that out. And that comes out like so. So let's see here. If we go ahead and take this drive bay out. Just wanted to see what else we have to remove. Had to pause the camera there for a second. I was pulling up on it when I should have just been pushing towards the back. And then that's how you disconnect it. This gives you an idea of what's in the bottom here now. There is the port here for the graphics card but before we do that we actually have to take out these two screws here so after fiddling it looks like we have to kind of wedge this out i'm going to use the pry tool here the spudger pops right out just like that the next step is to get the graphics card into place and based off of one of the videos that i watched this should be a fairly easy addition to this device so we're going to give it a shot take this out we're going to move this off to the side for right now and this should just snap right into place there's the snap and then you basically will use this wire here and then connect that up to that port right here that looks like that is in all right now, we should be able to repurpose the screws, and that's into place. So we have now added the card, pretty slick. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna power it up, but we are gonna put in the HDMI connection, and we'll get my capture card out, uh, which this is the first time I'm using this capture device, and so any input from you all about what you think, uh, let me know in the comments below. So let's go ahead and get this powered up. And so as you can see right now, we have the Radeon RX 560 is now part of this system. Initial impression so far is that uh, there is a little bit more fan noise because obviously you have a secondary fan dedicated to just the graphics card. I have seen upwards to over 130 watts now because of the additional power needed by the Radeon RX 560. So we've launched Unige in Heaven Benchmark. Now in the prior setup with the built-in graphics, we were averaging about 39 frames per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to untick the full screen because that's how we ran it the last time. We had OpenGL, our quality was set to medium. So let's give this a run and see, does the new graphics card beat out an average of 39 frames per second? All right, so as we can see here right now, we have an average frame rate of 53.1. We are now looking at 1338. Minimum FPS was 8.5 and max frame rate 96.8. Okay, now we are going to run the benchmark from Unigen Valley. So let's see what this, uh, what these results show. And here we go. We have a frame per second average of 48 frames. Score went up significantly to 2009. Uh, we can see that our minimum frames was only 22.2 here. Max was 80.6. All right, let's do a Geekbench test. Now with each of these tests, I am letting the unit cool down just a little bit. The fan speed has dropped. Uh, we're going to start with our OpenCL benchmark. Okay, we're coming to the end of the OpenCL benchmark here for Geekbench. And our final number is 14,628. And surprisingly, no change as far as the overall speed of the graphics, uh, pretty much negligible. Technically, it dropped. It says that we're running the 560, so that was interesting. I'm gonna run this again. So we're coming up on the second test of OpenCL, 
And I'm going to guess this is going to be about the same score. And we got 14,648. Small increase over the last one. The next thing that we're going to want to do is let's run the Vulcan benchmark to see if we see any changes there. Now, okay, this is more like it. Uh, it looks like our Vulcan score increased 22% over what we had before. So what if we go and we try a DaVinci Resolve and let's see if we see any increase there. Uh, this is a sample file. I normally do not work too much in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, but what I will do is I'm going to select YouTube as my output. We're going to add it to our render queue and we're going to see how long it takes. Prior to this, it was five minutes and five seconds. Will this be any faster with this graphics card? Let's go ahead and render all and we'll get back to you here at the very end. Wanted to chime in real quick. You can see that we are now pulling in about 125 watts. So we do know that the graphics card is working, but initial impressions is we are not getting that much faster rendering time. We're gonna see 505 is the time to beat. Does this graphics card make this any faster? Okay, we're coming to the end here and the final score is four minutes and 42 seconds. So we did see a small, small increase. Now, most of the footage that's on here was shot in 4K. This device is definitely not a device you wanna use for 4K video editing. 1080 it seems to be where it's gonna shine. Now, one other thing that we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna do handbrake with the built-in encoders to see if that is any faster than what I ran before. Okay, we're coming to the end here and let's see, can we beat the one minute 33 second mark? Uh, let's go to statistics and yes, one minute and 18 seconds. So that gets us about a 16% increase from the built-in graphics. By the way, the average encoding speed here was 94.57 frames per second, where it was 78.68 frames per second with the built-in graphics. Well, this was a fun project, even though I was a little disappointed in the results. To clarify, most of what I do with this PC is business-related software, which didn't show much improvement with my simple testing. And again, that's kind of what I was assuming. Honestly, I was hoping at least for a bump in the video export, um, but I didn't see it. Maybe it's a driver or setup issue I'm not aware of. You know, if you have an idea, leave me a comment down below. For graphics intensive tasks like gaming, you might find this to be a decent upgrade. If I remember correctly, if you add this card, it will require the higher end 135 watt power supply. So as shown in the video, I was pegging over 130 watts at some points during the testing. In addition to consuming more power, the noise level of the computer will increase significantly under the load. So please be aware of that as well. Currently, I removed the card since the current location for this computer is under my desk. With the extra cooling needed for the graphics card, it isn't smart for me to mount it in a place with limited airflow. So it looks like I need to do some minor rework of my home office. I look forward to reinstalling it, playing some games, but that's another video for another time. There is a link in the description to the eBay reseller if you are interested in purchasing one of the cards. Since my purchase, it has gone up in price slightly, so please check their listings for the cost and availability. Well, that's it for today. If you liked the episode, please take a moment to give me a thumbs up. Want this show to appear in your feed? Go ahead and click the subscribe button and bell notification icon. Thank you. In the meantime, feel free to watch one of my other videos here or here. And until next time, I'll see you again for another episode of Hey, What's Next?